Hi everyone, welcome back. So today we are going to take a look at how we can build a simple Go web service and deploy it to Azure Functions by using GitHub Actions. Azure Functions is a serverless compute service that lets you run code on demand uh, without having to explicitly provision or manage infrastructure. Azure Functions is a great way to build microservices and event-driven applications. If you are coming from Amazon, it would be very much similar to AWS Lambda Functions. So before we move on, let's try to understand the problem that we are trying to solve today. So Azure Functions support multiple runtimes such as .NET, Java, JavaScript, Python, and TypeScript. So all you have to do is write your code, deploy it to Azure Functions, and it will run. But what if we are using something like Go or Rust? Well, you can do that too as well by using something called custom handlers. So what really is a custom handler and how does it work? Custom handlers let your function app to accept events such as HTTP requests from a global host. So by looking at this architecture diagram, let's say we have something like a HTTP request that's coming in and then it will hit the function host. And then essentially it, was, it is going to forward the request payload into a custom handler. And then inside this custom handler, we would have our uh, web service running in. And then in the case of Go or Rust, we can compile a binary and then we can deploy that binary over here. And then it can then start accepting HTTP requests. And then we can also have an output binding that is like a response payload that's going out to the function host. And then we can forward that and uh, send it to the target. So that's the main idea of using a custom handler so that you can even write your uh, function apps in Go. So there's going to be three prerequisites for this to work. Uh, obviously, you need the Go SDK to build the application. And then Azure Functions Core Tools, which is like a runtime that you can run locally uh, on your development machine that emulates the exact environment that they have in Azure Functions. And uh, optionally, you can also have the Azure Functions VS Code extension. I would highly recommend that uh, because it makes your life much, much more easier when it comes to deployment and you know testing stuff. So let's first start by cloning the repo that I have created and uh, getting this to work. This is the GitHub repo that I have created for this demonstration. Uh, you can find the GitHub workflows and then the Azure Functions related code as well as our uh, Go related code as well, which is under the handler.go. Let's clone this locally and then get it to run. We are going to have a Go web service that returns some kind of a string. Let's start off by adding the main method and we can say uh, what is the port to listen to the traffic. And in Azure Functions, you can have this functions custom handler port. So it will read that from the uh, environment variables uh, and it will use that port instead of 8080. We are going to add a handler to handler request. And then finally, we are going to start the web service by calling listen and serve. So let's take a look at the quotes handler. So at line number 15, we are going to say message equals quotes and then pass in a random number to get a uh, string value from a slice that we have. And then slice is pretty simple. It says quotes and then a bunch of programming quotes. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. Uh, and then let's now run this and see that in action in our local environment. So in order to run this, we need to call go build handler.go and that will build uh, like this executable. That's uh, the handler. So you can even run this like this, but I'm going to say function start. So this will spin up that Azure Functions Core Tools runtime. Yeah. So it says get quotes is now live. And if I click on that, we get this uh, random string that's created. So I'm going to keep refreshing. As you can see, it changes uh, every time that we are going to make a request. So that's how the web service works. And now let's try to see how we can deploy this to Azure Functions. I will also walk you through what kind of files that we have in here. So first off, we have this get quotes function. Inside that, we have this function.json. Here you can define what kind of bindings that you have. So this is an input binding. Um, so how you know that is by looking at this direction. And then we also have like output binding for the response. So input binding is a HTTP trigger and uh, the method is get. And then for the output binding, it's also HTTP. And then uh, we just give it a name. Other than that, host.json file. We can do certain configurations like logging, whether we want to enable application insights. And this is the most important part. So since we are using a custom handler, we need to define it like so. And then uh, under the description tag, we can say default executable path. So this is the handler.go binary that we created over here. If you have a different name, uh, you can define over here. 
and then the working directory so we are going to be using the root directory so we can just simply say it empty and then any other arguments that we want to pass in into our uh, executable and then also uh, one thing to note is we need to enable this uh, enable forwarding http request so that uh, it will forward the traffic that's coming in into the um, global host and then it will forward that traffic to our custom handle from a code's perspective that's all we need to do in terms of configuration when you are in azure you can go to function app and you can use the search bar over here uh, let's click on create so it will show you this wizard and uh, you can go through the resource group and uh, the function app name and make sure to use code uh, as the publishing method and then for the runtime we are going to choose custom handler and then for the version it's custom and the region for the operating system we are going to choose linux and then for the plan we are going to choose consumption which is the serverless offering so once you have a azure function created um, let's go into that and then you can see uh, a whole bunch of configurations and uh, metadata and things like that over here so let's see how we can deploy this application into azure so if you are using visual studio code there is a plugin for azure so if you click on that uh, once you have logged in into your subscription you can see the function app over here and uh, you can create a new function from here as well and if you have already created one you can open that up and then uh, you can also deploy to function app from here as well that's much more easy if you are doing some dev testing so in our case um, i have created a github action so i will walk you through that now so under the repo if you go to dot github slash workflows there will be this deploy dot yaml file starting from line number nine uh, we have this azure function app name uh, you need to make sure to set this up uh, for your application's name so in my case it's just az go uh, function app and then we have the jobs so essentially there's going to be like this uh, build job uh, you could have multiple jobs to build and then maybe deploy as well so under the jobs we have this login via azure cli so this is essentially to use a service principle to log into the azure function so that this github action can uh, deploy our resources to the uh, azure function and then uh, we have this setup go that's going to install the go sdk which is for 1.18 and then we are going to build the uh, handler executable out of this so we are passing this go os to linux and then go architecture to amd64 and then finally we do the deploy to azure um, as well so for each of these we are going to use separate action tasks so in order for this to work we need to create a service principle in azure so let's head over to the terminal and run some commands to create that. So the code to create a service principle with the Azure CLI is like this. So we have as Azure Active Directory and then service principle create for RBAC and then the name of the Azure function. And then the role is set to contributor. And then for the scopes, we are going to say uh, the resource ID. So how can we get this resource ID? So from the Azure portal, if you go to properties under resource ID, you can get the uh, you can copy this value from here. And then all we have to do is replace this resource ID uh, with the value that we got. And then finally, we need to add this SDK auth flag as well. Since I already have one, uh, it is going to patch that. Yeah. So you will get a JSON response like this, and I'm going to copy that. So once you're in the repo, uh, go to settings and you can scroll down to secrets and click on actions under action secrets you can create a new repository secret you can give it the name azure rbac credentials and then you can paste in the response that we got from that terminal command so now that we have the github actions in place uh, we can run that and then uh, deploy the application into azure functions so once the deployment is done uh, we can go back to the azure function from here and you can grab the url and then uh, you can say the url slash api slash get quotes if I keep on refreshing, uh, it will show like a random quote. So that's pretty much it. And in this video, we saw how we can build a simple Go web service and deploy it to Azure Functions by using GitHub Actions. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.